Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chad, and I'm the founder and CEO of Scanta. So we've been working in the augmented reality space for about four years now. During the course of this presentation, I'll share a little bit about um, the broader known use cases, some things that we've already discussed today, and also share with you what we did with Discovery Channel, where we looked at finding a hidden treasure in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park using augmented reality. So let's get to it. So broadly, when we're talking about use cases, uh, especially for training, we got a lot of different ways we could use augmented reality for that. Uh, so I'm not really going to spend a lot of time uh, you know, explaining this. I think most of us in the room already know about this. But this is a, a case study that I would like to mention. Um, this is a project that Boeing did uh, when uh, they used augmented reality in their production processes. And what they really found out was um, the efficiency or the time that it took their engineers to work on the project uh, decreased by about 25%. So 25% time was saved because they used uh, a AR, AR headset that allowed them not to go back and forth between papers and go back to the field of view. So if, if you guys haven't checked out this study, it's, it's something that you can look at. It's pretty interesting. So one of the fun use cases that we worked on in 2016 um, you know, when we had the whole big flash of uh, Pokemon Go, I, I think that that's not the last time we've ever seen AR in gaming. I think uh, we're going to see some more things coming up. But um, the speaker uh, before me uh, mentioned this regarding um, AR in mobile. So we worked on AR in mobile for about three years, and you know, I second. Um, this thesis that you know it's not really there yet. The monetization is not there. These are a couple of games that we produced and we made. You can check them out. Uh, they're live on the App Store. One is called Polygoons, and the other is called AR Dunk. Um, so when we looked at these games, one of the issues was uh, when we looked at uh, how consumers are actually playing it. Um, one of the aspects is when users are playing games, they're at home or they're in subway or they're in transit. And uh, their view when they're looking at the phone is actually looking downwards. And it's not always uh, the whole arena is available to play the game, which sometimes is important to play an augmented reality game. It's because you need the characters, for example, in the, game, in the Polygoons game, to pop up in your environment so you can interact with them. So that's one of the challenges that we face. And also, you know, the hardware is coming up. Uh, but you know, uh, till now, if you really run an augmented reality game for more than about 20 minutes uh, on your iPhone, you'll see that uh, it starts to get heated up a little bit. So there are some hardware challenges to it. And we think that this is something that's going to change when we are going to have, when we're going to look at it purely from a headset, headset kind of a perspective. So uh, moving on to another use case, uh, this is one of my favorite use cases of marketing. Um, this is what IKEA did, um, of, uh, I think it's a couple of years ago. Uh, when they used augmented reality to sort of uh, place furniture. This is not only just uh, you know, for, for the thrill of it, but it also helped them if, if you're buying furniture, you want to understand what is the exact dimension of that furniture before you place it in the living room. Otherwise, that's a big problem. So hey, this, this use case is pretty like interesting. I want to know about Place, our new augmented reality app. Built on Apple's new AR kit, you can easily place two to scale 3D models of IKEA furniture in your place. Scan, browse, select, move, and place. So that could mean less of this. And less of this probably more of this. So I mean, I, I'm always a big fan of practical uses of augmented reality. And you know, they used it in the right way here. Um, but in marketing, there are a lot of different use cases. One of this use case that we did a couple of years ago, this was with Coca-Cola, um, where we the, the whole idea was to increase engagement. So we placed images throughout a specific location. So you would, um, through your camera, point towards that image, an AR avatar would pop out, interact with you, and give you a coupon for IoT-based uh, Coca-Cola dispenser, and you'll get a free Coca-Cola. 
So they were, it created the world record of maximum number of Coca-Colas dispensed from a, from a vending machine, which is 15,211. That's pretty cool. But again, uh, these are one-off cases. These are not sustainable revenue streams, which we face a big challenge with. And this is, again, something that we wanted to uh, push across from the mobile space so that everybody has access to it. But again, you know, that's something that's coming up more and more now because you don't, you don't need to necessarily download an app like you had to in 2017. You can use web-based platforms for that. So we see that from a consumer or a marketing standpoint, this is coming up more and more as we move along. So when I was talking to you about, uh, we popped out these AR avatars, we got a little carried away. We started developing an entire library of these AR avatars. And today we have the largest library of AR avatars in the world, over 110 plus characters. Uh, we partnered with Unity Technologies for this. Most of these are also on the Unity Asset Store. And one of our thesis at that time was because uh, the engagement with mobile AR was increasing, but there was not a direct monetization, st monetization stream. We were looking at partnering with social media houses like Instagram, TikTok. We are also licensing, licensing out our AR avatars to them so that they can get more 3D assets and you know, users can engage with it. So this is something we recorded in TechCrunch last year of, of about what are the possibilities and what all you can do with these avatars. So we've got a huge library. It's called pikamoji.com. You can also check it out. Um, the Donald Trump character is specifically uh, something that people like a lot. So we've got a lot of uh, feedback on that. Um, so you can choose your favorite and see if you, if you like it, if you like augmenting these characters in your space. The application is free. All, all our applications are free, so there's no cost to it. So it's good to have a feedback if you like. Um, so looking at these characters, um, uh, you know, some of the characters were also a little human-like. And uh, we got a call from uh, Discovery Channel uh, from, an, from Josh Gates, who uh, hosts this show called Expedition Unknown. So Josh came up with this unique problem. He said, um, you know, we're looking for potentially a hidden treasure in the Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, which was buried in 1981. What we want you to do is reconstruct a statue, which is called the goddess of the forest. And based on this statue, we will start digging in the Golden Gate Forest for treasure. I mean, this really sounds strange, um, but we thought uh, this would be one of the most interesting use cases uh, for augmented reality if you are able to uh, be successful in it, right? Um, the challenge here was, so this is uh, how the goddess of the forest looks now. It's, you know, nothing's really there. And on the, on the right side of the screen, you can see how the goddess of the, sta uh, goddess of the forest looked when it stood. So what we had to do here was not only recreate the entire 3D structure, anchor it, but the catch here was that they wanted to dig um, for the treasure exactly where the shadow of the statue aligned on 6 p.m. June 21st, 1981. So we had to create an artificial sun. Artificial sun would push, would hit the uh, statue in a certain way that the shadow will fall at that particular place where the treasure was hidden. So I, I don't want to talk too much about this. I just wanted you guys to see it in action, uh, what really happened here. So I'm going to let you watch the clip. In no time, he takes the scans and I just want to point photos, out it was not in no time it took us one week. They just <laughs> exaggerated everything. The totem's long lost base, which rotted away. And now we have its exact dimensions. Unbelievable. Perfectly reconstructed as she originally stood. Now all we need is to turn back the hands of time. So June 21st, 6 p.m. And once we do that, you see the shadow lining up yes exactly how it was on that day incredible this is so cool thanks to william and chad i have the totem pole neatly tucked away in my tablet all one of the puzzles of the secret to pull it off we're using custom software to travel back in time scanta take me to the 80s okay and here we go so we look around a little bit okay. and then we tap are you ready yeah yep. here we go Oh, Whoa! It works! <laughs> Look at that! Wow. <laughs> and
and our totem wow. has returned. Looking at the pedestal through the eyes of augmented reality, the totem pole has returned in its full glory, and behind it, the blazing sun of June 21st at 6 p.m. <laughs> and that means where we have sun, we have shadows. Here's your shadow at the exact time, day, and date, which is leading us right over there. That is the X marks the spot. Let's go get it. Let's go get Let's it. Let's go. go. Get it. Now, according to our puzzle hunters theory, all we have to do is search within the virtual shadow and we'll find where to dig. Guys, just so start probing right in here. That's the edge of our shadow line. <laughs> they grab some probes and get to work, checking the area beneath our virtual shadow. And then they check some more and some more. After an hour, they have as many hits as Yahoo Sirius. So in order to find out if they found the treasure or not, you have to watch the entire episode. I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> um, so, so this was like a really fun activity to do, uh, finding that use case you know, that would actually bring some entertainment and help us maybe find hidden relics. Um, but what we think is, you know, we're at such an instant stage right now. Um, AR is, uh, you know, in its totality. So our objective is to find out from domain experts how they think augmented reality could be used, because they are the ones that have an insight rather than us predicting. You know, for us, it's impossible for, uh, to predict that if this is something that's really possible to find to sort of re-augment uh, an old statue, right? So Josh thought about it. We made it happen. And I think that's sort of the best way to do it. Um, so I'm here. If anybody has any questions, uh, I can meet you guys. And if we are, we specialize in creating proof of concepts, as you see, um, and uh, would love to have a chat. Thank you.